Okay, so our first picture here. was uh, submitted by Doreen Yurowski, and it's a photo of a young barn swallow um, from a second clutch. And it was taken um, by a house sitter in the RM of La George, September, 2021. And just give me two shakes while I get the next slides going. And the next presenter is Hero. Just to give you a little heads up, Hero. <laughs> sure, this is shared first. Oh. Sorry, just a little technical difficulties. Wouldn't be a Zoom meeting without them. Take it away, Hero. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I would like to start my talk with this photo. Next. Next, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, when I saw this shot, I thought uh, this, the messenger from the sky came down to us to tell us that we can conquer this pandemic if we can keep the hearts much cleaner and more peaceful. Next. It looks like a flying angel. Next. He likes music very much. Next. I usually go to south of Regina and it's quite easy to see uh, this year. Next. Sometimes flying, but uh, sometimes hard to find him hiding. Next. I saw this great horned owl in Grassland National Park. It is quite whitish. Next. There, I could see the family were borrowing out one of parents with six kids, I counted. Next. To see great gray owl, I have to go to east of the province. Next. Uh, fortunately, I could see many bald eagles this year. This one I could see near Regina. He's sitting on the tree near farmer's house. Next. I could see a pair of bald eagles were mating in the early morning. Next. He's now skating. Next. <laughs> uh, American Kestrel, next. Marlin, next. Swainson's hawk, next. Cooper's hawk, next. And uh, Osprey family with two chicks, next. American tree sparrow, I saw them quite a lot this year at the spring and the fall migration, next. Snow bunting, next. Lark bunting, next. Mountain bluebird. I saw quite a lot this year at the Highway 99 and uh, Buffalo Pond Provincial Park, next. Uh, white pelican at the Waskan Marsh, next. Snow geese at the Waskana Lake. In winter time, it's uh, the best place to see many of geese. Next. This might be a 
greater white fronted and the Canada goose hybrid. Next. I could see a uh, black neck to stilt uh, near Chapri. Next. This is the family's photo. You can see two chicks. Next, here and here. Next, actually, uh, this family had three kids. Next, yeah. Next, uh, at nose, it's easy to see room. Next, at the south, a common night hawk is sitting on the porch and half sleeping. Next, great egret. I saw it at uh, Queer Lakes. Next. <laughs> Long build curl. I saw at the Grassland National Park. Next, marbled Godwit at Chaplin. Next, and the piping probe. Next, uh, Wilson Snipe was singing at his territory. Next, a uh, female sharp tailed grouse. Next, and uh, spruce grouse. Next, this is year two. Next, uh, whenever I go to north, I could see northern light quite often, but uh, I couldn't not know. <laughs> how to, uh, I don't know yet, uh, how to get a good picture. Next. Uh, coyote, next. Uh, male elk, next. Female, next. Uh, black bear in spring. I, I saw a couple of uh, black bear this year. Next, Martin. Uh, it's quite lucky to see Martin. Hello. Next. Hello. You want to see Saskatchewan animals? All these pictures are taken here. Uh, sometimes Martin is sitting on the tree. You have to find it. Next. Okay, otters. Uh, my favorite animals. Uh, usually uh, they are alone. Uh, and, uh, but uh, next. It's quite uh, uh, quite, uh, you know, lo lovely animals. Next. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he lives as a single. Next, but in winter time, they live with the family. I think uh, one well, mother, mother and three kids. Next. Uh, he's eating a uh, big fish as a breakfast. Next. Uh, to see the otter, I have to go to north, like uh, Prince Albert National Park. Hopefully I could see the otter near Regina, like Buffalo Pound Provincial Park. Province should uh, reintroduce this species in the south part of the province again. Okay. And at the stage, trapping should be ab avoided. Since uh, nowadays, uh, nobody wants to wear a fur coat anymore. Next. 
I, I would like to show you a dance of uh, author. He's a quite good uh, hip hop dancer, I think. <laughs> I could watch this all day, Hero. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Next. Uh, thanks this year, everybody. Next. Have a nice uh, 2022. Thank you. Bye. Those were beautiful. Thank you, Hero. Okay. Sure. Okay, so next up we have. Oh, that was wonderful. Bruce Holmes and I will get the screen sharing going right now. Well, that's great, thank you. Hero, you're a hard act to follow. Those are really beautiful photos. And so I, this year I thought I would just uh, concentrate on some pictures that I've taken over the course of the year that uh, Either they're unusual in some way, or uh, at least things that are new to me. Um, and the first one is uh, a blue jay that appeared in my backyard early last winter. Um, I live in South Regina and we have a, a backyard that's completely fenced in. There are some big trees around now, but really we rarely see blue jays there and I'd never seen one in the backyard. And for some reason, this guy was hopping around the, the back, uh, grass for several minutes before he flew off. And then next picture, please. The very same day, uh, some gray partridge showed up for the first time ever. And uh, this was a couple of a group of about five or six that were wandering around my yard for much of the morning for some reason. Uh, I'm always surprised when I see the birds, I, re I realize that their feathers are all puffed out for insulation there, but it, it amazes me to see something that kind of looks like the shape of the rock they're standing beside can actually fly. The next picture, please. And then in the uh, early spring, a uh, common yellow throat showed up in my backyard as well. Uh, I'd only seen one of these on a couple of occasions in the past and, and never in suburbs and never in the grass, but there it was hopping around looking for insects. And uh, next picture, please. The very next day, I got a picture of this one, uh, probably the only other one I saw all summer. And this was in a more typical habitat. This was uh, near Ruscana Creek in the McKell Conservation Area. And I was thinking at the time that maybe if you spot one of these in your backyard, it might be time to cut the grass because uh, they're probably thinking they're back home. Next, uh, next slide, please. So I, I, being retired just the last year or two now, uh, I've spent a lot more time outdoors. And this year was the first time I'd really spent a lot of time at the McKell Conservation Site. And I really enjoyed it there because uh, it obviously provides a habitat close to the city that's unlike anything else you'll, you'll see around. And I saw a number of species that I actually was able to identify for the very first time ever. And this is one of them, the bobolink. I realized they're not uh, that uncommon, but I, I know that they are a, a species of concern. Uh, and all summer long, there were a number of them that uh, apparently were nesting in there. Next photo, please. And there's just uh, another picture of another uh, male bob link. And next photo. And that's the female. I realize as a photographer, I'm always looking for something bright and exciting. And I tend to uh, ignore the females of the species quite often. But uh, in this case, uh, I really kind of like the, the warm yellows and browns of the, uh, the female. The next slide. This is the, the first year I was able to get a half decent photo of a Western meadow lark as well. Uh, there were a number of them in the McKell area uh, this summer. 
And it took me a while to find them. Uh, it took me a while actually to realize that when I heard one singing, it was actually a lot farther away than what I thought. They're pretty loud. Uh, and the other thing is when I tried to approach them at all with the camera, I, I didn't have to get very close at all and they'd, they'd be flying away. Uh, so this one here, I used my telephoto was sitting on one of the, the fence, uh, or sorry, the uh, sign posts uh, in the area and I managed to catch that picture before it flew off as soon as I got a bit closer again. The next photo, please. The other thing that surprised me a bit, uh, most of the summer there were a lot of clay colored sparrows uh, around as well. Typically I'll see these in the neighborhood in the spring. Uh, my thought was that they were just migrating through and spending most of their summers further north. Uh, but apparently these fellows were there uh, all summer long as well and, and nesting in the area. So I managed to catch a few photos of them. The next photo. I also caught a few of these. This is a Savannah Sparrow. Uh, one that I had never seen before myself, or at least identified before, uh, because they just don't come into the suburbs at all, but uh, they were uh, pretty numerous uh, in Mikkel. The next photo, please. And I felt pretty fortunate to capture one of these. This is a Nelson Sparrow. I understand that they're relatively uncommon as well. And uh, there was really only one day that I saw a couple of these flying around and managed to get uh, at least one decent shot from a fair distance away. The next photo, please. And this isn't the best photo. I didn't have my telephoto with me that day, but it's a loggerhead shrike, uh, which I understand is also an endangered uh, bird. Um, there was a time in early August when uh, I saw about five or six of them in the area and managed to, to capture this one. The next photo, please. So that sums up my experience at McHale, uh, as far as any new species to, to me go. Um, when I presented last year, I mentioned that I always like to try to get as many photos of, of wood warblers as I can because they're notoriously difficult to photograph. They, uh, they tend to move around pretty quickly and they're also generally through for only a short period of time in the, the spring, apart from maybe the uh, uh, yellow warblers. So I did manage to catch this nice photo of a black and white warbler who was hopping around the tree trunks. Uh, this was in West Canada Marsh. Next picture, please. And this also isn't a, a great photo. It's a bit blurry, but the bird actually wasn't sitting still very much. This is a northern water thrush. And I also found it in uh, West Canada Marsh. I'd only ever seen one of these before in Ontario, so I was happy to find it. Uh, even before I used the telephoto, uh, I pretty much knew that this is what it was. Um, just by the way it was walking, they, they bob up and down quite a bit when they walk. And my thought is that these birds look a lot like they, they've maybe taken a course in how to walk, but missed a few classes along the way. And uh, they, they just look rather odd. The next picture, please. And I also found one of these, a black pole warbler. Um, it's been actually a few years since I've seen one of them and I'd hoped to catch your photo even last year, but never did see one. So I was happy to catch this. And this was at uh, A.E. Wilson Park in the early spring as well. The next photo, please. Now this is a pair of American widgeons. Um, and I didn't realize it until after I'd taken the photo and, and processed it afterwards that uh, this male of the species is a bit different from the usual uh, male widgeon. Uh, a typical male widgeon has a, a white forehead and gray on the cheeks and neck, uh, together with the green that goes back from the eye. And this particular one is all white uh, with very little gray. Uh, and I understand from what I've read since then that uh, this is a maybe not rare, but somewhat uncommon mutation that uh, leads to uh, the feathers being all white in that area rather than gray. I understand that uh, people in the hunting community uh, call this a storm widgeon and they're somewhat highly prized by, uh, by hunters. And the other thing I guess I, I read after as well is that uh, widgeons just love hanging around diving birds like the uh, American coot that's also in the picture here. 
Uh, they wait till the birds dive and get some vegetation from the bottom of the pond. And then when they come back up again, they'll go over and steal as much as they can. Uh, so it's not surprising, I guess, that there's a, a coot in the picture here too. I, uh, I was at uh, the Wascana Marsh a, a number of times over the summer and in early October, on a couple of occasions, I saw uh, at least a hundred uh, American coots uh, all in a flock out on the, the water. And in each uh, occasion, the majority of those coots had a, a widgeon hanging nearby and, uh, and stealing their food. So it was something to see. Next photo, please. So I included this. This is what the typical uh, American uh, widgeon looks like uh, with the gray on the, the cheeks and neck rather than the white. And then the last photo is one I took last winter. Um, I had yet to see a snowy owl in the wild uh, myself. And uh, with COVID being what it was, my wife and I decided on a couple of occasions just to get in the car and drive out of the city. And sure enough, uh, just south of town around the gray area, uh, on each occasion, we saw a number of owls. And this is the first one we saw here. This is likely a female. And I just have to be sitting on a stop sign just outside the gray, almost as if it was waiting for us. Uh, we parked about 20 feet away, rolled down the window and got some photos that didn't seem bothered by us in the least. So I included that one as well. And that's everything. So thanks everyone for having me on tonight. Thank you, Bruce. That was awesome. I think that Nelson's was a really fine sighting, definitely. Congratulations on that. All right, so next we have uh, Kim Mann, and I'll, I'll let, uh, Kim's going to be handling her own uh, Zoom, so whenever you're ready, Kim. Okay, I think we've got it now. Um, Kim asked if I go first because I had to set up the screen to make it uh, work. Okay. Okay, I think we're, I think we're in business here. Yep, we can see your screen. It looks great. Okay. Um, I, good evening. Sorry, this is Val. Um, Kim and I both take photographs. And uh, what I like to do on the members night is just show a selection of photos from the previous, well, from this year, from the last meeting um, that were taken. So this first photo is a picture of a pincushion cactus from Kim's garden. And each year, this is the particular flower that I wait the whole year to photograph. It's a very finicky flower. It only blooms for usually just a day. And it blooms at a, a very specific time, uh, just about lunch hour. If there's a cloud anywhere near it, it, it closes back up and then that's it. So um, very much like this flower, but it's not the easiest sometimes to photograph. The next set of pictures are pictures of vistas. Uh, this time last year, actually, I think it was December 22nd, where the great convergence of Jupiter and Saturn were at their closest. This photo was taken just west of Regina on a grid road. I believe Saturn is the, the top dot and Jupiter is the bottom. And you can see they're very close, almost touching. It was... <laughs> It was really interesting because we had a whole two minutes to get the photo. That dark bank of clouds you see rolled in just as it got dark enough to photograph the two planets. And within about three minutes, the clouds covered 
the two planets. This spring in March, uh, we had a couple of really good nights with auroras. Now, the issue we've run into with trying to photograph auroras is that I really dislike having lights on the horizon. So I, I try to find a spot that does not have any um, lights, which you would think would be easy to find in rural Saskatchewan. Unfortunately, it's not. So this one evening, um, we said it, we knew that there was going to be an aurora from the different aurora apps. And we set out to our, our spot that we've scoped out and we know do, doesn't have any lights or other man-made objects, only to find out that the grid roads were mush and not passable. So at the last minute, we were desperately driving the grids to try and find a place that would meet what I was looking for. And as luck would have it, we lucked in. And this, this was a spot just uh, northwest of here. On the way home from that spot that same evening, just as we were coming up to Condi, the northern lights exploded across the sky and just danced brilliant colors. I will say this photo has had a bit of Photoshop editing in that we couldn't get to a spot that didn't have lights on the horizon. So the this was the best we could do, but there were some lights and those have been edited out, but it was just an amazing sight to see. Uh, many, many of you go down to Reed Lake in the spring to watch the shorebird migration. Kim and I have made this an annual trip for quite a few years. This photo is a composite to create a panorama of the view looking towards Morris on the grid road that goes across the lake. Just to show a, a few plant pictures, this is an evening gumbo primrose, if I remember correctly. Oh, I have it mixed up. Kim has corrected me. What was it again? Gumbo, Gumbo Evening Primrose, again from her garden. The, this picture with this slide with two pictures actually shows our prickly pear cactus. It's, it's the brittle variety. However, the picture on top of of my uh, flexible tripod shows what happens when you get too close to this particular plant. And you can see its thorns embedded in the gray foot of the, of the flexible tripod. One of my favorite uh, plants in the spring are crocus. And I, I like the fact that they're furry. So this is a group of uh, crocus buds from one plant. And you can see the fur on the buds. And then this is the plant, that same spot when it opens. Um, this is another one of the plants in Kim's garden. It's a Western spider wart. And it, it just makes a very elegant picture. A few bird pictures from this year. This Swainson's hawk was on the side of a road. He was very close to the car and didn't seem to be affected by the car. Of course, can't show pictures without showing the favorite snowy owl picture of the year. 
again, this was uh, an owl that was by the side of the the side of the road. I think I'm not sure if it was the same trip or not, um, but this was a sharp-tailed grouse that was running across the stubble in in a snow-covered field. This little bird, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't get a great picture of it, um, is the yellow-throated warbler that visited in the late spring. Um, a fellow member called to say that he had sighted the bird, and Kim and I went down. It was in South Regina, and it was flying between trees uh, on two streets on two streets and uh, just caught glimpses of it, but did at least get the picture of the yellow throat. One of my favorite little birds, um, a shorebird called a red knot. Uh, this was at Reed Lake again during the spring shorebird migration. The same day, there was a ruddy turnstone in the same area. These are two sandhill cranes that flew over the car and, uh, and made just a really pretty picture. And my last slide, I just wanted to mention uh, a project that I had been working on um, during COVID. It's really nice to see your photos in a book, it printed in a book. And uh, I spent almost two years compiling uh, pictures of um, a whooping crane sighting that we had a few years ago. This was a family of whooping cranes that were enjoying the Saskatchewan fall in a farmer's slough. And we were lucky enough to see them uh, twice on two different occasions. And uh, over, over the next two years, um, basically curated a, uh, a number of pictures to put into this book to record that event. So we actually saw them three times, twice on one day and one a week later. But the, it's, it's really nice to actually see your photos printed in a book format. And that's why I'm showing this. Um, if, if anybody finds that, especially during lockdowns, um, you're looking for something to do, I would highly recommend this. And that's it for my presentation. And I'll get Kim set up. Thank you very much, Val. Those were beautiful. And congratulations on your book. Thank you. Uh, OK. We're just switching out. Hello, can you hear me? You can hear me? You can hear me? OK. Yeah. yeah um, excellent. Um, yeah, Val went first because she needs to set this up. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm starting off the picture with um, uh, a bovine cervical vertebrae that I came across, well, actually, a friend and I came across in a native prairie pasture that we have been visiting for several years. And uh, I call this one the face and the bone. The next picture is of a short-eared owl. Um, a friend of ours has organized a, what we call a snowy owl prowl, which is basically just going out and counting snowy owls on a specific day in specific areas. And uh, if we're lucky, we do see other owls at the same time. And this particular year, we saw great horns and short ears as well as snowy. 
And then because of COVID, we haven't had much opportunity to visit many of our favorite birding spots. Um, so we've been sticking pretty close to home. And uh, this was in my backyard in Rochdale Park. We get lots of cackling geese that come in with the Canadas. And sometimes we get a few snowies and um, white fronts. But uh, this particular cackling was having a bath. And uh, they're pretty tame when they're in the local parks. Um, and besides which, they pretty much cover the whole area of the water. So no matter where you are, you can get a fairly close picture. This is the prairie crocus from the, the same native prairie pasture that the, the face and the bone was from. Um, last spring was really dry and my favorite native pasture area, uh, the prairie crocus had a really hard time. Um, a lot of them didn't even flower some of them didn't even produce seed. But we found that by this fence, it's like a corral area, um, because the snow had accumulated and gathered moisture there, that the prairie crocus were actually quite abundant and did produce quite a few seeds. This is the same um, prairie pasture, but farther away. And uh, we're lucky enough in this particular pasture area to find not only the common purple color, but we've also seen light blue, pink, and of course this pretty rare white one. And uh, this is a seven spot ladybug crawling up the side of it. I'd love to call her a pollinator, but she's not, she's in search of bugs. Again, um, focusing on my backyard, I have this, well, I don't have it, there is a big male balsam poplar on the other side of our fence that's in the park and we call him Big Bert. Big Bert is huge. He's very mature and his um, branches have now reached over our deck in our backyard which provides a really good opportunity for uh, photographing wildlife and this particular orange crown warbler was uh, going through on migration and was busy feeding. We also have the resident local crows that, uh, yes, I, I'm very good friends with them because I feed them. <laughs> but uh, crow, as I call him, um, has had several nests around our place. And then this particular spring, last spring, he had a nest just over to the uh, west of us and brought his babies into our yard. And this one has just recently fledged Note the blue eye, it's pretty, pretty spectacular. Um, haven't been down to the Royal Saskatchewan Museum and Native Nature Regina's native garden that much this year. I wanted to, but I was uh, busy doing stuff in my backyard. But a few times I did get down and uh, this is a native bee on a gallardia. It's a great place to go down and take photographs. There's lots of pollinators in there and lots of native plants. This particular native plant is a prairie coneflower. It's in my front yard and the uh, butterfly on it's a coral hair streak. This is the first one I've ever seen. Um, pretty cool, it was in the front yard. And again, during migration, we get lots of warblers going through I find they're pretty tame when they're in the backyard. And this is an American red start. Not sure if it's a female or a young male. Um, I think I see little bits of black in the crown area. So I'm thinking it's a young male. And then last picture, a friend called me and uh, told me about a pair of wood ducks that were hanging out in a local park. And uh, he said, you know, they're they're pretty easy to spot. So Val and I went down and had a look. It took us about an hour before we found them. And uh, luckily the lighting was quite nice that day. So anyway, that's, that's it for my photos. I would like to wish everybody a happy new year and thank you very much for viewing my photos.
Thanks, Kim. Those are absolutely awesome. That coral hair streak. I wish I would have seen that one. <laughs> it's beautiful. Amazing. Thank you so much. See, we have um, a couple of pictures from Darlene Clifford that I'll show. All right, um, so these photos are a couple of ravens and the shots were taken while vacationing in Alberta when uh, they were traveling from Banff to Jasper. Um, the, in 2016, uh, uh, um, we had, or 2014, uh, to 2015, we had our whole weeping tile be done. And this whole entire area that you're looking at was just mud and earth that had been dug out. So when we returned things, we decided to do a blue gamma lawn. And I've actually done um, a little uh, write up on blue gamma lawn for the Horticulture Society that might be of interest to nature, uh, Regina. So this is an example of the blue gamma lawn. So we may have uh, about uh, 20 square meters of native uh, forbs, uh, about 30 different kinds, and um, about uh, 20 to 30 square meters for this uh, blue gamma a lawn. But anyway, I'm going to just sort of fast forward to the pandemic uh, when I participated in two um, uh, items with iNaturalist. And one was the Nature Conservancy of Canada uh, Backyard Bio Blitz in 2020 and in 2021, the Canadian Wildlife Federation City Nature Challenge. And, you know, it was something to do during the pandemic and um, it was really enjoyable. And I would like to say I've taken all of these pictures with uh, a iPhone 7 that's been dropped a hundred times <laughs> or more. And, um, and so you had to get quite close to the things that you were photographing. And um, I didn't really think too much um, about it. Um, we just took the photographs. These are some um, morning cloaks and they were lots of fun because they were uh, really friendly. And I think most of the time you're at work during the day and the butterflies are coming out during the middle of the day when it's the sunniest. So probably, um, I mean, we've seen these before, but I think quite often we miss them. And because you were working from home, um, it was a good time to see them. And um, this, uh, and I'm not going to show all the, the, uh, the butterflies. I have just four of them here. This is a Milbert's tortoiseshell, which is really early. Uh, and this is a red admiral. And Lawrence had me go back because he thought it was the same butterfly. And I said, no, no, look at the red over here compared to the uh, where the the red is over here, that they're they're uh, different uh, butterflies. So as you were taking pictures of these, you began to to get quite uh, good at them. Um, this one is a uh, uh, fritillary, and uh, during this whole process, I really knew very little about butterflies, but I discovered that there is connection between the fritillaries and violets and leaf litter. And, um, and so, uh, you know, it was sort of an aha moment, but please note that it is on the um, echinacea that, uh, that Keith Barr um, had, uh, had sold us. So one of the, the great things about this whole uh, process is that about 10 years ago, I bought um, my first um, milkweed plants and the first monarch showed up six years um, uh, later and then, but you know, no caterpillars. And then 10 years, sorry, eight years later in 2020 was the first time that we ever got monarchs. And at that time uh, I brought a few of them in because I had never seen the the metamorphosis that had occurred and I wanted to see them. And I read, you weren't supposed to do that. And I wasn't going to do that in 2021. But the trouble was, is that most of our echinacea is, um, is in a, well, we put up a bird feeder, a new bird feeder, right where, sorry, right where the 
milkweed was, which was just a very poor idea. And the bird feed, like all the sunflower seeds was on the ground, which attracted the squirrel, which attracted a mouse, which attracted a cat. And at one point, I just got so nervous with all the action that was occurring amongst the milkweed that a week before they turned into chrysalises, I decided I've got to get all of these caterpillars out of there because they're just never going to survive um, what was happening. And that is, in fact, what you saw over here is that um, these are then the chrysalises and every single one of them made it except for one. And, and having never experienced this, we were just so, so pleased with that uh, result. And then I'm just going to end in that in our travels, we've discovered that there are so many cities that have adopted um, uh, keeping native plants and, and having air, large areas of native plants. This happens to be in Wisconsin, but we also see it in places like Winnipeg, which has, um, uh, uh, in many of their parks, have uh, native, uh, uh, native plants. And it would be nice if more of our parks have that and we have a chance to, to hopefully review the next or the an early draft of the, the uh, new park master plan. Um, and I'm hoping that the public will be able to comment when it comes out and that we'll be able to see it. So that's the end of my presentation. And now can we switch over to Lawrence is the uh, question. So I will just stop share and we'll get Lawrence to maybe give this a try on his. Um, so if you can get to the... Um, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, when Ingrid mentioned the idea of uh, presenting slides, of course, uh, a flood of memories just came back from um, previous uh, fall and summer meets with Nature Saskatchewan and members sharing slides and also Regina and, and Saskatoon uh, members nights. So I thought, oh, this will be great to get reacquainted with Nature Regina. Um, I guess I'm in the same club as Bruce, uh, recent retiree. So uh, I guess I've, I've had a, a lots of opportunity to get out of the house, especially during uh, uh, the pandemic. And, um, uh, you know, grabbing my phone and walking around uh, Wascana Lake, just north of, of uh, the university. There. So also we're going to be sort of going through the seasons uh, from fall to fall. And the second one is basically very close to the shot of the, the first one, but uh, walking around in, uh, a lot in winter. And you discover uh, various uh, birds that have traveled through. And in fact, one thing I found very interesting is, is watching this specific area uh, throughout the winter and spring and, and seeing how it changes. And, but it's the same route for the geese. Um, and this is sort of close to uh, the university um, drive uh, earlier on in the winter, followed by uh, a spring scene um, as well. Now, being retired, I think well, both Ingrid and I retired, we're finding that we're having, you know, these days where, you know what, let's go out to Hidden Valley. And uh, we haven't really done that before. And now we have this, this time. So one of my favorite seasons is, is well, seasons, the spring and fall, where things are changing quite dramatically. Um, and this spring, we were really pleased to see a lot of um, prairie crocus. And, at, uh, at Hidden Valley. At Hidden Valley as well. Yeah. Now, also going kind of eastward to uh, where I grew up in Pine River, Manitoba, I also had the opportunity to visit some areas that I 
explored almost decades ago. And in this particular area with the marsh marigolds, it's right beside the number 10 highway in a ravine where we collected our drinking water from a, a pipe that came from the bank and uh, it kind of produces a floral display. Now I've, I'm familiar with the showy lady slipper for, well, since I was growing up in, in Pine River, Manitoba. And we would find them north of our farm on some fens very close to the railway that went north of the farm. But this past year, I was really surprised when I went for a walk just around town and they were actually growing in town. And uh, was really surprised and pleased to, to, uh, to come across these. Now this past fall, um, another area that I haven't been to since the early 80s where I worked uh, with uh, DTRR at that time, uh, Environment Saskatchewan now. And I wanted to show Ingrid some of the areas where I, I worked and it's just downstream from Catepo Lake and um, in the fall and just incredible native prairie uh, along the slope. And the last slide is, is a panoramic uh, shot uh, looking uh, downstream from that very... Uh, so that is it. And thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to share some slides and happy new year. <laughs>